What is up guys, Nick here with a review for episode 9 of Arrow season 3 titled The Climb. Now this is the mid-season finale for Arrow, so um, yeah, I'm just going to say that a lot happened in this episode and there will be spoilers at the end, um, heavy spoilers, so be warned. So yeah, now the premise of this episode is that Oliver has only 48 hours to find out who really killed Sarah Lance, or the League of Assassins will start killing innocent people... Um, I think 50 people at a time in Stalling City, so obviously Oliver cannot let this happen in his own city. So yeah, um, basically um, when Caitlin sends the DNA results from Central City to the Arrow Cave about who really killed Sarah, the team is kind of shocked at the results. I mean, they find out that Oliver Queen is, has his like prints all over it, and obviously it's not Oliver, so Felicity and Diggle theorized that maybe it could have been his sister Thea, given that they're both siblings, and um, Oliver refuses to believe any of this. I mean, he, that's his sister, so obviously he's not going to say anything about that. And, um, yeah, so he confronts her about it, and she basically lies to him, and he looks into it more and finds out that she's been spending a lot more time with Malcolm Merlin that, than, he, than she's been telling him. So it kind of... Um, that brings a lot of doubt to Oliver, and he doesn't really know how if he can trust her that much now that she's spending so much time with Merlin, who obviously we know is just pure evil, basically, and is kind of manipulating her. So yeah, um, when Malcolm reveals the true killer of Sarah to Oliver when he like shows up at his nightclub and Oliver basically makes him say it or else people are going to die, um, they do reveal who really killed Sarah, and it actually was Thea. And I, <laughs> I was a little bit surprised by that because, um, I d I had no idea. There was nothing really pointing to her, I guess, other than the fact that it was someone who was not like super tall. Apparently, Felicity said. Um, yeah, I mean, part of me was surprised, and part of me wasn't because they kind of set it up in the beginning of this episode when. Laurel and Thea were talking at Sarah's grave, like, she seemed kind of suspicious, he's like, are you the only one who knows? I mean, who says that? It's like, uh, what? <laughs> Wait a second, let's go back. I mean, yeah, so it kind of, it was a little suspicious there, like, little subtle things that kind of were like, hmm, something's off about Thea, you know, but, yeah, I don't know, so, which leads me to the subplot, I guess, about, um, the episode that was kind of centered around Laurel, too, and that her mom, Dina Lance, returns to Starling City only to find out that her daughter is dead, basically. I mean, Laurel has to tell her at that point because she keeps bugging her about it. So that was kind of the subplot to this episode with the whole Laurel story, I guess, because when the show returns, they're going to do like a Laurel trilogy of episodes called the Canary Trilogy or something, where she turns into Black Canary finally on the show for some reason. <laughs> so yeah, um, but one of the cool aspects of this uh, season so far has been the Hong Kong flashbacks, and uh, this time we get to see Oliver and Maceo in the flashbacks, and like, developing their relationship more, and we also get to see Katana fighting with China White, who we know is pretty much the villain of the flashbacks in this season so far, and um, unfortunately it does seem like Katana is killed off, which is kind of, it kind of, it's a little bit of a bummer, because I actually wanted to see her in present day, you know, doing some stuff, but I guess, well, she's dead, so maybe someone else will take the mantle, I guess. But yeah, um, what people really were coming for this episode was the fight between Oliver and Ra's al Ghul, so obviously that's the focus. Um, so yeah, Oliver does request to meet with Ra's to tell him who killed Sarah, but he basically sacrifices himself in saying, yep, I'm the one who killed Sarah, and Nisa and both Ra's and Nisa are pretty, like, caught off guard by this. And personally, I think that Roz knew he was lying, but he kind of just was like, alright, he just kind of went with it. And Oliver challenges Roz to a trial by combat, and he gets 12 hours to say his goodbyes to everybody, because Roz is co pretty convinced that he's not going to be walking away from this. And, um, yeah, th I thought this was the highlight of this episode. I mean, one of them, at least, because we got to see, really, the relationships that all of um, the characters that Oliver interacts with have with him, and it was like a really nice farewell that he got to say to his friends and family, like Diggle and Felicity. There was a great like moment between them and with Thea and everybody. It was really cool. And then that's where the real fight begins in this episode because Oliver does have to climb up a super giant mountain snowing and all this crazy stuff. And that's where the title of this episode comes in, I guess, The Climb. He has to make this climb to fight Roz. 
And, um, yeah, so once he gets up there, uh, they have to, like, go shirtless, I guess, because it's, like, sacred ground, apparently. And, um, I think that was more like a throwback to, like, the old Neil Adams Razo Ghoul fight, where they were both shirtless. So, yeah, I guess that leads me into talking about how Ra's al Ghul was portrayed in this episode, because this is the most we've ever seen of him in the entire season so far. I mean, we got, like, a glimpse of him, but this is, like, the first time we actually get to see Matt Nabel acting as Ra's. And I thought he was really awesome, and I'll tell you why, because this version of Ra's is much more faithful than the Nolan version, because this one actually takes inspiration from the older Batman, like, Denny O'Neill, Neil Adams stories, and... I was really pleased with that, and um, the way that Matt Nabel portrays him is, like, he's really intimidating, and he you can, like, clearly see that he's, like, this ruth- like ruthless guy that has no problem killing anybody, and he can definitely handle himself in a fight, where the Liam Neeson version, I mean, you could kind of see that, but, I mean, he was kind of getting beat up by this new newbie Batman, too, which is kind of like, what? But, I don't know. So, yeah, okay, this is where the heavy spoilers are going to come in during the fight with them. So, if you guys have not seen the episode for some odd reason, um, just put this review on pause and go watch it. But if you're still here, then let's get right to it. Well, basically, Oliver gets destroyed in this fight. I mean, there's no way to put it. I mean, he poses no threat whatsoever to Roz. He just toys with them and just kind of slaps them around and just kills them, basically. I mean, <laughs> Matt Nabel truly shows what like, an awesome dude Roz is in this version, and, yeah, so, I mean, Oliver gets stabbed, and stabbed right through the chest, and just gets kicked off a mountain, I mean, it was, like, 300 or something, I mean, yeah, but, I mean, it was pretty cool, and he does give this little speech to him in, like, Arabic, I think, is the language he's speaking, I'm not sure, don't quote me on that, I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure it's Arabic. Um, yeah, so that happened, and, I mean, I thought that was, like, a great way to to end the episode and to end the fight, because, realistically, Green Arrow should not beat Ra's al Ghul, like, one-on-one in this type of a sword fight. I mean, the only one that can really stand up to him is Batman, and, obviously, we're not, we don't have Batman anywhere, so <laughs> that's not gonna happen. But I was a little surprised that they just flat-out killed Oliver off right then and there, because... Like, the way I saw it is that they were going to make some sort of, like, way to tie them. Like, nobody would win and it would just end on, like, a cliffhanger. But to just flat out stab him and just kick him off a mountain, like, wow. <laughs> I mean, that was kind of like, okay, uh, yeah, that happened. But, um, yeah, he's not dead for sure. I mean, he'll he'll be back. Um, they'll probably do a Lazarus Pit or something because they even mentioned that Ross hasn't fought someone in, like, 67 years, so... That uh, essentially confirms that we're going to get the Lazarus Pit in the show, which is another point that makes him more comic book accurate, that this Roz version has the Lazarus Pit. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. And um, I guess just ending the episode like that really set up the tone for the second half of the season. And one thing I do want to mention about the season three as a whole is that the showrunners and writers have made a point to say that this season is going to focus on identity, for Oliver and the side characters, I guess. And Maceo says to Oliver before the fight that with Roz that a man cannot live by two different names. So I'm speculating that Oliver Queen died on that mountain, and when he gets reborn, he will be the full-on Green Arrow that we know. But I'm not... I mean, hopefully he does, but I'm not sure about that part. <laughs> he might not be wisecracking, but he'll be more of a Green Arrow, possibly. Um... So yeah, as far as Easter eggs go, we got a nice reference to the Omax yet again, and a full look at the Adam Exo suit, which, and a nod to the Flash mid-season finale. So yeah, overall, I thought this episode was just pure awesomeness, and <laughs> I love the Roz vs. Arrow fight, and I cannot wait to see what happens next. Um, unfortunately, we're going to have to wait until January 21st to find out what has happened to Oliver. He's just sitting out on a mountain right now waiting. <laughs> He's going to wait a month and a half. He's just sitting there, dead. So yeah, with all that being said, let me know what you guys thought of this episode and the first half of this season as a whole. Um, yeah, comment below with your thoughts, and uh, it's going to be a while before we see each other again. So happy holidays, everyone, and uh, this is Nick signing off.